Welcome to the knowledge series of IT Partshala. In this video, we will be discussing the architecture module of our knowledge series. This tutorial explores the principles and goals of software architecture and how does the architecture affect the structure of the application. In the same way, as a building architect sets the principles and goals of a building project as a basis for the draftman's plans, so too a software architect sets out the software architecture as a basis for actual system design specifications as for the requirements of the client. The software architecture of a program or computing system serves as a blueprint for both the system and the project team developing it, defining the work assignments that must be carried out by design and implementation teams. The architecture is the primary carrier of system qualities such as performance, modifiability and security none of which can be achieved without a unifying architectural vision. By building effective architecture, you can identify design risks and remove them early in the development process. Software architecture is essentially the art and science of designing and building software applications that meet the needs of its intended users over a period of time and pattern of usage. A software architect employs extensive knowledge of software theory and appropriate experience to conduct and manage the high-level design of a software product. The software architect develops concepts and plans for software modularity, module interaction methods, user interface dialog style, interface methods with external systems, innovative design features, and high-level business object operations, logic, and flow. A software architect consults with clients on conceptual issues, managers on broad design issues, software engineers on innovative structural features, and computer programmers on implementation techniques, appearance, and style. Why is architecture important? Like any other complex structure, software must be built on a solid foundation. Failing to consider key scenarios, failing to design for common problems, or failing to appreciate the long-term consequences of key decisions can put your application at risk. Modern tools and platforms help to simplify the task of building applications, but they do not replace the need to design your application carefully, based on your specific scenarios and requirements. The risks exposed by poor architecture include software that is unstable, is unable to support existing or future business requirements, or is difficult to deploy or manage in a production environment. Points to be considered before software architecture is designed. Software should be designed with consideration for the user, the IT infrastructure, and the business goals. For each of these areas, an architect should outline key scenarios and identify important quality attributes, key areas of satisfaction and dissatisfaction. Following high-level concerns must be discussed when thinking about software architecture. How will the users be using the application? How will the application be deployed into production and managed? What are the quality attribute requirements for the application such as security, performance, concurrency, internalization and configuration? How can the application be designed to be flexible and maintainable over time? What are the architectural trends that might impact your application now or after it has been deployed? The goals of architecture. The goal of architecture is to identify the requirements that affect the structure of the application. Good architecture reduces the business risks associated with building a technical solution. Architecture should expose the structure of the system but hide the implementation details. Realize all of the use cases and scenarios. Try to address the requirements of various stakeholders. Handle both functional and quality requirements. Layers. An application system consists of three logical layers as follows. Presentation layer, business logic, data access layer. This diagram is a logical representation of an application system. When a system is physically implemented, application system components can be physically deployed on different computer systems. For example, the presentation of the web page you are looking at is being handled by your personal computer. The logic required to consolidate and communicate the visual objects that it needs is occurring on a web server located in Delhi, India. The presentation layer is what a system user sees or interacts with. It can consist of visual objects such as screens, web pages, or reports, or non-visual objects such as an interactive voice recognition interface that you use over the telephone. When most people think of application systems, they think mainly of the presentation layer. Unfortunately, this layer represents a small portion of the effort involved in building application systems. The business logic layer, on the other hand, represents the business rules that are enforced by a programming logic regarding how those rules are applied. 
This business logic layer on the surface can appear to be very straightforward, however it is rarely so. The data access layer consists of the definition of database tables and columns and the computer logic that is needed to navigate the database. The data access layer enforces rules regarding the storage and access of information. For example, dates must be valid dates and numeric fields must never contain alphanumeric characters. Tiers In the beginning, computers were separate individual devices. Programs had access to all the computers' input and output through computer-connected devices. With the invention of networks, things became complicated. Now we have to write programs that depend on other programs running on remote computers. Often we have to write all those faraway programs as well. This is what is called tiered or distributed programming. Difference between layers and tiers. Layers describe the logical grouping of the functionality and components in an application whereas tiers describe the physical distribution of the functionality and components on separate servers, computers, networks or remote locations. Although both layers and tiers use the same set of names, remember that only tiers imply a physical separation. It is quite common to locate more than one layer on the same physical machine. One tier architecture. A one tier application is simply a program that does not need to access the network while running. Most simple desktop applications like word processors or compilers fall into this category. One-tier applications don't need to handle any network protocols so their code is simple. Such code also benefits from being part of an independent operation. It does not need to guarantee synchronization with faraway data nor does it need exception handling routines to deal with network failure, bogus data from a server or a server running different versions of a protocol or program. Moreover, a one-tier application can have a major performance advantage. The user's requests don't need to cross the network, wait their turn at the server, and then return. This has the added effect of not weighing down your network with extra traffic and not weighing down your server with extra work. Limitations of one-tier architecture. All three layers are located on the same machine, all code and processing kept on a single machine, presentation logic data layers are tightly connected, Scalability, single processor, means hard to increase volume of processing. Portability, moving to a new machine may mean rewriting everything. Maintenance, changing one layer requires changing other layers. Two-tier architecture. This type of architecture is also called client-server architecture because of the two components, the client that runs the application and the server that handles the database backend. When the client starts, it establishes a connection to the server and communicates as needed with the server while running the client. The client computer usually can see the database directly and can only access the data by starting the client. This means that the data on the server is secure. Users cannot change or delete data unless they have specific user rights to do so. The client-server solution also allows multiple users to access the database at the same time. Another huge benefit is that the server processes data that allows the client to work on the presentation and business logic layers only. This means that the client and the server share the workload and by scaling the server to be more powerful than the client, you are usually able to load many clients to the server, allowing more users to work on the system at the same time. Limitations of two-tier architecture. Database runs on server, separated from client, easy to switch to a different database, presentation and logic layers are tightly connected, heavy load on server, potential congestion on network, presentation still tied to business logic. Three-tier architecture. This type of architecture involves one more tier called the business logic layer, service tier or middle tier. In the client-server solution, the client handles the business logic and that makes the client thick. A thick client means that it puts heavy load on the server, thus making it difficult to use over slower network connections. By introducing the middle layer, the client only handles the presentation logic. This means that only a little communication is required between the client and the middle tier, making the client thin or thinner. An example of a thin client is an internet browser that allows you to see and provide information fast and almost with no delay. As more users access the system, a three-tier solution is more scalable than the other solutions because you can add as many middle tiers as needed to ensure good performance. Advantages and limitations of three-tier architecture. 
easier to maintain, 3-tier architecture offers the best security as the middle layer protects the database tier. Each layer can potentially run on a different machine. Presentation logic data layers disconnected. Additional tiers increase the complexity and cost of the installation. Faster development. Web designer does presentation. Software engineer does logic. DB admin does data model. N-tier architecture. N-tier architecture uses several tiers of computers to interpret requests and transfer data between one place and another. The 0th tier is at the source of the data. Each tier is completely independent of all the other tiers except for those immediately above and below it. The nth tier only has to know how to handle a request from the n plus 1th tier and how to forward that request onto the n minus 1th tier and handle the results of the request. N-tier architectures usually have at least three separate logical parts, each located on a separate physical server. Each part is responsible for a specific functionality. When using a layer design approach, a layer is deployed on a tier if more than one service or application is dependent on the functionality exposed by the layer. An example of the N-tier architectural style is a typical finance web application where security is important. The business layer must be deployed behind a firewall which forces the deployment of the presentation layer on a separate tier in the perimeter network. Another example is a typical rich client connected application where the presentation layer is deployed on client machines and the business layer and data access layer are deployed on one or more server tiers. Advantages and limitations of N-tier architecture Maintainability because each tier is independent of other tiers, updates or changes can be carried out without affecting the application as a whole. Scalability, because tiers are based on the deployment of layers, scaling out an application is reasonably straightforward. Flexibility, because each tier can be managed or scaled independently, flexibility is increased. Availability. Applications can exploit the modular architecture of enabling systems using easily scalable components which increases availability. Friendly for new feature addition. Due to the logical grouped components and the decoupling brought by entire architecture, new features can be added easily without affecting too much on the whole system. Slowness. The performance of the whole application may be slow if the hardware and network bandwidths aren't good enough because more networks, computers and processes are involved. Higher cost for hardware, network, maintenance and deployment because more hardware and better network bandwidths are needed. Architecture module of our knowledge series ends here. In this tutorial we discuss the types of the software architecture and how does the architecture affect the structure of the application. For more videos please visit our library at www.itpartshala.com.